Hey, what up, everybody? This is Stevie Breeze coming to you. I think as, as well as everybody else out there, I um, spent most of my day thinking about the Ultimate Warrior uh, as I go into work. Today was my first day back. Um, you know, every single person who reads the newspaper or looks at Facebook or knows anything um, about me who uh, knew I was a wrestling fan or knew I just got back from a trip for WrestleMania... Every single person that even didn't know anything about who the Ultimate Warrior was made sure to come up and, and point out to me that the Ultimate Warrior died. Like uh, it was almost like the point of like they were trying to like see if they were gonna be the first person to tell me. It was like nobody was really like asking me what I thought about it. They were all asking me like if I had heard about it. And um, uh, honestly, it just it got to the point where it just honestly just got annoying. I mean, like, uh, nobody wanted to talk about, you know, what the Ultimate Warrior had done in the past and why he's remembered and why he's, you know, looked at as, as he's a celebrity, why he was put in the Hall of Fame. It was sort of like everybody just wanted to rub it in my face that, you know, the guy died, which was just kind of weird. So I spent a lot of my day trying to figure out, you know, you know, if these people are going to listen to me for a minute, what I can tell them about the Ultimate Warrior to make them know why this guy was a big deal. And as I look over it, I mean, like the video I made last night, I really honestly didn't say anything. I was in shock just like anybody else. I think I made that video within the first hour of finding out um, that he had died after I'd had my phone call with Miguel and I talked to him about, you know, that he that he had died and I wanted, I, 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 I wanted him to find out the right way. And that, that was the reason why I called him. It wasn't like the, I was trying to stab him in the back or anything like that. We've gone back and forth a thousand times about whose favorite wrestler is dumber. And, you know, like he points out all Hulk Hogan's faults and I point out all of Ultimate Warrior's faults to him. And we go back and forth. But when it comes down to it, that's his favorite wrestler. Hogan's my favorite wrestler. We're both friends. So, I mean, like it's just sort of like picking back and forth. But... I, I hope to God that if, if I ever find out about Hulk Hogan dying, it's not through the idiots that I work with. I hope that it's it's one of my friends is able to get to me and able, you know, to... It, it's not like you have to talk me through it like I'm going to jump or something like that or anything like that. But just, like, it's going to be a shock to the system. I mean, it, it was honestly to the point where I was telling Miguel, and it was almost to the fact that he didn't even really want to believe that it was true. I mean, we saw this guy on Friday. No, I apologize. We saw this guy on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania, and Monday Night Raw. He was right there in front of us. I mean, like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, like, we just saw the guy in the ring. He flies home, and he's walking to his car with his wife, and he dies. He just falls down on the street. Everybody's read the story. Everybody's heard the story. But it's just beyond the point of, of, of crazy. I mean, I, I could honestly never believe anything would like that ever happen again. I mean, the guy just got put in the Hall of Fame with, uh, uh, three nights before. The biggest accomplishment you can get in wrestling. You can go back and forth and you can debate if the WWE Hall of Fame is worth a damn or anything like that. But, I mean, like... There's nothing that he's going to get in the rest of his, you know, lifetime is uh, about his career that is going to be that great. I mean, like, he can, um, it is the crown jewel. I mean, like, you can see how much wrestlers really believe uh, there is a thing. There's some wrestlers like Paul Orndorff who get put into the Hall of Fame who, who, who think it's not worth a damn. But you can see the guys, the politic trying to get themselves in, even though a lot of people look at it like it really just doesn't matter. Um, you know, Carlos Colon, one of the closing deals on him uh, selling the Puerto Rican tapes um, to uh, the WWE to put on the network was that they want, he wanted himself put into the Hall of Fame. So you can see that the wrestlers are out there who really care about this, even if it's basically to, you know, stamp on an 8x10 and make sure you can, you can sell a few more, maybe get a few bookings along the way. But, you know, with Warrior, you know, it's like I said in my video last night, you know, I was a Hogan fan. And there's Warrior fans. It's hard to be both. It's like being a 49ers fan and a Raiders fan. It just doesn't work. A Mets fan and a Yankees fan. Um, a White Sox fan and a Cubs fan. It's just like there's these lines. You cannot be you know, fans of both teams. You cannot go both ways on that side. But um, 
You know, some of, you know, my favorite moments with Hulk Hogan were with the Ultimate Warrior. You can go back to the 1990 Royal Rumble where they do the stare down, the face to face, which led to them going to WrestleMania and having the big match. Um, it was almost like, you know, the earth shattered and there was a big earthquake and it opened up. The world and time stopped spinning. It just... The two biggest names in WWE were about to go at it right there in the middle of the ring. And it was almost like, there's no way in the world this is really going to happen. And, and, you know, that shook the earth. I, I'm not sure where the 90 Rumble was. I want to say it was in Orlando, but I'm not 100% sure. But it was like, that was Vince McMahon's stamp of approval. This is a match that people want to see at WrestleMania next year. This is what we have to make our main events. Of course, everybody knows because of No Holds Barred. It was almost going to be Zeus versus Hulk Hogan. And I think everyone in the world can believe that, you know, WrestleMania 6 was a huge success. And it would not have been that. God damn, would they even have sold out the Sky Dome of Zeus in the main event? Um, you know, you go from there. 1990 is one of my favorite years in wrestling. Um, you go to the 1990 um, Survivor Series, the ultimate survival match. You, of course, you had... Uh, the Hulkamaniacs for one team, and you had the, uh, I don't, I can't remember what it was, but they, they basically, they had their own matches, and then they came together at the end, and they teamed with Tito Santana, they went up against uh, the Million Dollar Team, and I believe Rick Martel survived from his team, so they went in there, that's a really, really great, awesome pay-per-view, one of my most shocking wrestling moments from when I was a kid was uh, on Scramble Vision, uh, basically, um, on the old days before, you know, cable went digital or cable, you know, came over the dish, you used to be able to have a cable box that sat on your, uh, um, on top of your TV. And if you went to channel 98 or channel 99, nine times out of 10, they were porn channels, uh, the spice channel, whatever you want to say. And, um, it was also the same channel that they had wrestling events on, boxing events, so on and so forth. So there wasn't a way of truly blocking them. I mean, if you went and you pressed 99 and, you know, a wrestling event was on, the picture would all be straight up scrambled. Like, there would be colored lines going all across the screen. But they they never turned off the audio. So, I mean, if you were a fan of listening to the radio, you could get by, you know, watching this pay-per-view. You just couldn't watch it. And um, when uh, the Ultimate Warrior wrestled Sergeant Slaughter, I remember it just being like... He lost the fucking Sergeant Slaughter. I mean, like, you can go back and you can read all sorts of stories. Uh, Vince McMahon was a little bit wrong. Warrior was starting to demand too much money. He wasn't drawing on the road. He wasn't, you know, the star that they thought he was going to be. It was supposed to be Ultimate Warrior was your champion. And Hulk Hogan was going to be your legendary guy that people still were paying to see. And they were going to ride Hogan as long as they could. And, um, you know, he would dip off and, and, you know, the Warrior would go on. And he would be the main star of the company. Of course, that never really happened. Um, and you can go a thousand reasons, you know, why that happened. But, you know, that, of course, led to Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. Also led to, you know, the Ultimate Warrior going up against uh, Macho Man Randy Savage at, at WrestleMania 7. And the uh, career versus career match and everything like that. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, and then one more thing, my favorite pay-per-view of all time. You go out there, um, you have SummerSlam 1991. Uh, you have um, Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan tagging up against Sergeant Slaughter. Um, the Iron Sheik, it was, it was Sergeant Slaughter, Colonel Mustafa, and General Adnan. Uh, whatever it was. One guy was an Iranian rat wrestler. One guy was the Iron Sheik dressed up like somebody else who did the bushwhacker as he walked to the ring. And, of course, this is where Ultimate Warrior, I guess, supposedly held up Vince McMahon at the gorilla position. He told them to go out there and he'd give him the money. And as soon as he walked through the curtain, he fired his ass. But I never learned that story for years. And I never really noticed that the Warrior disappeared and we didn't see him again until the following WrestleMania. I don't know why I didn't. But, um, you know, the Warrior was a, was a big star. Vince McMahon always knew that. Even though it seemed like they had a rocky relationship where he, he came and went and, he, you know, he did things... Um, it just, he has a place in wrestling. He is a true legend. He is a true Hall of Famer. He might not be my favorite wrestler, but I can understand why the world is rocked that this guy just passed away out of the blue. But, uh, you go over his career, um, 
I haven't watched the uh, Blu-ray or the DVD yet, but I think everybody knows that the you know, WCW was not the best time of his career, and I, I'm sure he said some stuff in there um, on the on the DVD. People are saying that the uh, self-destruction of Ultimate Warrior uh, that you know, is selling off the roots uh, on Amazon. I don't know if maybe just all the cheaper copies sold out, and people just are trying to make a quick buck by throwing them on there. Maybe they all have high prices, but nobody will buy one. Maybe somebody will get lucky. I don't know. But I say, honestly, the DVD's not rare. You go out to like a used DVD store. Here we have Dimple Records. Um, shit! WrestleManiac. He goes to that one store, and I just had it in my, my head, and I, I forgot it. Maybe you guys go out. Look around. You can find it. It's not going to cost you more than 5 bucks at most places. Um, if you hold out for maybe, about, I'd say, a month, Maybe two months at the most, the people who are trying to sell these things are, are going to realize they're being idiots. And that's going to fall back down. This DVD was selling for nothing a little while ago. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. I mean, you got the self-destruction of Ultimate Warrior. Um, you can go on to YouTube. There's a documentary on there. Somebody took the self-destruction of Ultimate Warrior. And they took the Ultimate Warrior shoot interview. And of course, everybody knows that the Warrior stuff... Uh, oh, the Ultimate Warrior didn't help with the self-destruction. There's no interviews on there. But somebody out there who was an Ultimate Warrior fan noticed that this was the only real documentary WWE had, and this was the only shoot interview that the Warrior had. And they edited it, and they sewed it back together, and they uploaded it onto YouTube. I don't know how to find it, but it happens all. I, it pops up all the time when I search for Ultimate Warrior on there. It's probably one of the most searched... Uh, thing on the algorithm, it pops up first. If, if you need help looking for it, check it on Twitter. As soon as this video loads, I'll tweet it on Twitter and I'll try to put it in the description box at the bottom, but it won't be there ASAP. It'll be there a little bit later tonight once I figure it out. But those are my thoughts on the Warrior, and um, we'll go from there, man. Peace out. I got another uh, uh, Click 30 video to upload tonight. That's going to be our trip to Monday Night Raw. And then, of course, we just got the closing up of Monday nights, heading to the airport and coming on home. I mean, the Warrior, uh, the, the WrestleMania videos are done. I'll get the uh, Merch Mania video up for you ASAP. Everything's sitting on my desk, just ready for the uh, the video to be made. I just have to grab my WrestleMania shirt out of the dryer. I washed that last night. And uh, we're good to go. Peace out, everybody. Click 30 one more time. Love you guys.